happy to be here. Uh, this is the last session, as said, and uh, it's amazing how many people are still at the conference. Um, I'm going to speak about uh, how large organizations can take account of uh, what was just said. We all see that uh, there's no doubt that artificial intelligence is going to have a huge impact in our lives, in our businesses, and in our societies. Um, <clears throat> it's going to be a huge business opportunity. And uh, it actually is so popular because there are so many great applications that a few years ago were unthinkable, yeah? but now they are happening. Yeah? Think about uh, advanced uh, diagnosis of medical diseases. Yeah? Of course, self-driving cars, uh, personalization, yeah? and uh, even the creation of art. Yeah? So last uh, few months ago, an, 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 uh, a painting was sold that was uh, painted by a machine and it, it, it got about $400,000 yeah, on, on an auction. Um, if you look at the middle uh, figure, it's actually a video where you see people uh, dancing just like Bruno Mars uh, while they can absolutely uh, are unable to dance. Yeah? So this is what they call deep fakes. Yeah? So it's all kind of uh, the, 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 last, last, the newest part of artificial intelligence that is doing really, really great things. Yeah? Why is it so uh, possible and powerful? Because there is a huge amount of data yeah, that wasn't there in, in, in the beginning. Yeah? So it has uh, grown uh, significantly. And also, uh, access to processing power yeah, is uh, now almost, uh, yeah, it's very cheap, yeah? it's accessible. And then there is new technology like deep learning that is enabling all those things to make it happen. And then I think any large company, so like Telefonica, is using this kind of technology across many different areas of the business. Of course, this is a marketing uh, conference. Uh, Telefonica is using a lot of AI, big data, in, in, in improving its marketing, customer lifecycle, but also all kinds of business processes that are being optimized. And also the interaction with the customer. So now our customers can talk to a machine, yeah? an artificial intelligence machine that understands what they say, that maps it to their needs, and then goes back into the systems to find the data yeah, that they are asking for, and they have a, have a conversation. Yeah? But you can also use it to optimize other businesses. Yeah? So we have a lot of data in our mobile networks, which basically is a proxy for human activity. And with that, you can uh, provide insight about transports, how, how cars move around cities. Or you can uh, use it for tourism to understand where are tourists coming from, from which country, where are they moving to, etc. But you can also use it for, uh, for social purposes. So that same insights in a mobile network can help to find out uh, to better uh, manage the effects of earthquakes, of other natural disasters. Yeah? Or you can help in uh, the prediction and the improving of air quality in large cities because you understand how uh, traffic moves around the city, and traffic is very much correlated with air pollution. So there are all kinds of applications in large companies of this kind of new technologies. Now what's happening is that we've also seen some consequences which are, however unintended, are something that you wouldn't like uh, to see. Yeah? So a few of them are here. If you look on the left side, yeah, so we all have, if you take a picture, you see this uh, small square around the faces of people. Yeah? And you can see there are squares around all faces except for one. Yeah? And that happens to be a black person. Yeah? Now the situation of this photo is specifically difficult because it's also on a, partly on the, on the black background. But really what the issue here is that this is a machine learning system. It has learned, it's called supervised learning. So it has seen millions of pictures of faces. So it has learned to detect what a face is. It has no clue what a face is. It's just a combination of pixels. And uh, this system has been trained with a lot of uh, pictures of white people, uh, and only a few probably of other color people. And that's why the system has not learned to identify this, this problem. So that's all there is. There is no, this is an unintended discrimination, but it's still there. Yeah? Now, if you look at the other side on the right hand, you can, you, you can see this. This is, all, this is Google Translate. Yeah? So if you put in a sentence like, she is a doctor and he is a nurse, and you translate it to a language that doesn't know gender as such, like Turkish, and then you translate it back into English, then you get, he is a doctor and she is a nurse. Yeah? So that's also something that, uh, well, we wouldn't like to happen. Yeah? And why is this happening? Again, it's the same thing. 
this is a machine learning algorithm that learns from a lot of examples. So it has seen hundreds of millions of times that she, uh, that he and doctor are more frequent than she and doctor, and vice versa with, uh, with a nurse. Yeah? So again, this is an effect, an unintended effect, but in the end, this kind of discriminating, uh, in this case, against uh, gender, which is something that we would not like to see. Yeah? Now, there are a few other examples, <coughs> which I will not go into detail. Now, what is happening is that organizations are starting to act. They know all those negative consequences uh, that might happen, so they take a uh, positioning, yeah? they take a standpoint. Google has done it, has come up with some principles for AI, Microsoft, IBM, uh, there's partnership of AI. <clears throat> also Telefonica has uh, published its uh, AI princi principles in applying this technology, but also also kinds of institutions, yeah? like the European Commission has come up with a guidelines to make sure that if you use this kind of te technology, that it doesn't do those kinds of things, uh, et cetera. Etc. Of course, it matters for what you, what you do it for. Yeah? So if you do a medical diagnosis and you make an error of you send people to jail or not and you make an error versus whether you recommend them a video or a song, I mean, the impact on people's lives is very different. So you have to take that into account. Yeah? So our company launched uh, its AI principles, principles uh, last year and it's all about fair AI, so it should not discriminate. It should be transparent and explainable if it impacts people's lives. It should be human-centric, of course, privacy, with privacy and security, and also not for the things we do ourselves, but we do there's also the things we do with providers. Then <clears throat> we are now landing these principles into what does it mean in the organization? We call it responsible AI by design, and it's a set of questions and tools uh, that people who work with this technology have to work with in order to, uh, to make sure that those unintended consequences do not happen. Thank you very much.